Deep in prehistoric caves, some of the earliest human records reveal our primordial ancestors understood the importance of herbs. Ancient people discovered they could dramatically improve the effectiveness of herbs by extracting the essential oils. Highly concentrated essential oils are many times more potent than the original herb. The Egyptians used animal fats and the heat of the sun to separate essential oils from plants. In Pakistan, refinements in distilling allowed essential oils to be produced at night and in much greater amounts. Shen Nun's herbal book is the oldest surviving medical book in China. It contains information on over 300 herbs and their medicinal applications. The Ebers papyrus, an Egyptian medical scroll, recorded over 800 remedies for many types of illnesses and described various methods of applying essential oils. Queen Hatshepsut's expedition to the legendary land of Punt was one of the greatest adventures of antiquity. Her army brought back wondrous riches. The greatest of all the treasures was the grove of myrrh trees, which were brought back to Egypt as gifts to the gods. I have commanded my armies to explore, for choice ointments to express it for the divine limbs. Heaven and earth shall be flooded with pure scents. When King Tutankhamun's tomb was opened, archaeologists discovered alabaster jars designed to hold precious essential oils that were valued above gold and jewels. Stretching some 2,400 miles, the frankincense trail winds from southern Oman through Yemen's high mountains, across the dismal dunes and black volcanic deserts of Saudi Arabia, and ends on the borders of Israel. Huge caravans with thousands of camels loaded with precious frankincense and other aromatics traveled the treacherous trail as worldly kingdoms rose and fell from power. It is estimated by historians that more than 3,000 tons of frankincense may have been transported over the trail annually. In ancient Greece, Hippocrates was commonly known as the father of medicine. I believe that a daily aromatic bath followed by a scented massage will promote good health. Hippocrates saved Athens from a devastating plague by fumigating the city with aromatics. After Alexander the Great defeated Darius III of Persia, he adopted the use of essential oils. It is said that his floors would be sprinkled with scented waters and that his clothes carried fragrant resins. Alexander was very skeptical of medicine and doctors. I am dying from the treatment of too many physicians. It is recorded in the New Testament that three wise men visited the newborn Jesus and presented him with gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Pliny, a Roman historian, wrote a book titled Natural History that describes the uses of herbs and essential oils. It is the belly, for the gratification of which the greater part of mankind exist, that causes the most suffering to man. No wonder then that the belly should have to be indebted to the aid of medicine in the very highest degree. An Arab physician named Avincina improved the quality of essential oils by developing steam distillation. The evolution of steam distillation dramatically improved the quality and quantity of essential oils that were produced. Therapeutic use of essential oils continued through the Middle Ages. Saint Hildegard, an herbalist, wrote causes and cures for illness. With earth was the human being created. All the elements served mankind, and sensing that man was alive, they busied themselves in aiding his life in every way. During the medieval plague, four thieves in Marseille robbed the dead without becoming sick. When captured, the men revealed a mixture of aromatics they used to protect themselves against the deadly plague. 
the thieves' secret formula was posted for everyone's benefit. By the late 1800s, pharmaceutical researchers began to isolate the active compounds in natural remedies. By the early 1900s, impressed by synthetic drug manufacturing and quick-fix treatments, the public shifted allegiance to allopathic medicine. During this time, the knowledge and use of essential oils were largely forgotten. A terrible accident in his laboratory caused Dr. René Maurice Gattefossé, a cosmetic chemist, to be burned severely. He covered his burns with lavender essential oil. Amazed by the positive effect the lavender had on pain and the subsequent quick healing, Gattefossé focused his research on the healing powers of essential oils. Dermatological therapy would thus develop into aromatherapy, or a therapy employing aromatics in a sphere of research, opening enormous vistas to those who have started exploring it. Doctor, there are more wounded and we're out of antibiotics. Hand me the essential oils. Using Gattefossé's research, Jean Valnet, a French doctor during World War II, successfully treated wounded soldiers with essential oils. The antibacterial properties of the oils helped the wounds heal faster and with less infection. In recent years, both doctors and the public have rediscovered the medical value of essential plant oils, but the idea of using their properties to maintain or regain health goes back to antiquity. Dr. Jean Lepraz, a student of Dr. Valnet and a member of the prestigious phytoaromatherapy research team in Paris, discovered that microbes could not survive in the presence of some essential oils. Essential oils are especially valuable as antiseptics because their aggression toward microbial germs is matched by their total harmlessness to tissue. On a personal quest to discover the keys to health and longevity, Gary Young traveled to Europe in search of lost essential oil knowledge. Returning to the United States, Gary Young was determined to restore the forgotten therapeutic secrets of essential oils. I returned home from France. I brought seeds with me. I had a little quarter of acre of land in Spokane, Washington. I built a small greenhouse, and I started experimenting. In this one-quarter acre garden, Gary Young cultivated sage, clary sage, thyme, lavender, bergamot, tarragon, and German chamomile. Gary built his first essential oil distiller by welding two pressure cookers together with a swan neck of copper pipe. The distiller was placed on the kitchen stove, and the water for the cooler came from the kitchen sink. Once I confirmed that I could grow and produce therapeutic quality essential oils, I had to have more land. And I found a 160-acre ranch in the St. Mary's area that was virgin soil, and that began the future. Structuring their growing business, Gary and Mary Young formed the company Young Living Essential Oils. Seeking additional fertile land to produce high-quality essential oils, Young Living Essential Oils secured a 1,600-acre herb farm in Mona, Utah. I knew in order for us to have the quality of oils that I wanted to produce, that I would have to create my own equipment. So I designed and built the first stainless steel vertical distillery that maintains and captures those finest molecules for the therapeutic action of pure essential oils. Due to the unmatched quality of their essential oils, the business grew rapidly and Young Living Essential Oils expanded into Canada and opened the Australian and Japanese markets. Dr. Terry Friedman, former medical director of the Phoenix Health and Medical Center, established through scientific research that attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in children could be successfully treated with essential oils. Around the world, hospitals and medical clinics are implementing aromatherapy and essential oils. Dr. Alan Hirsch, director of the Smell and Taste Treatment and Research Foundation in Chicago, said that the future of medicine lies in aromatherapy. In the very near future, according to Dr. Hirsch and other leading medical professionals, every home medicine chest will contain essential oils. <laughs>